We all expected Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League's release to be less than spectacular because unfortunately for Rocksteady, it has faced controversy ever since the first teasers and trailers released, but now we have a look as to the sales and they seem to be off to an extremely shaky start. I have a few things to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, follow me on social media, and consider supporting through Patreon or via YouTube memberships. Uh, this is a Game Rant article that I wanted to start out with. It says, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League just launched, but it already appears to be in a precarious position based on initial physical sales. Developer Rocksteady's follow-up to its Arkham series is taking DC Universe adventures in a new direction by putting players in control of some classic Arkham inmates this time around. This was not a bad idea. Unfortunately, though, it was an extremely terrible execution. As the next chapter in the Arkham series, the new title has some big shoes to fill, not only because the other Arkham series games were so fantastic and they are so beloved, but because they've also had some serious competition over the past few years when it's come to other recently released comic book video games, and even those ones that did poorly, it seems like Suicide Squad at this point in time is doing significantly worse than those. And taking a quick peek at the meta scores by critics, Kill the Justice League is at a 62, Avengers, a game that is so bad, a 67, something like Gotham Knights is also at a 67, Midnight Suns an 83, Guardians of the Galaxy 80, so all of its kind of direct competition, it is doing significantly worse than, and I don't think a lot of these games deserve like 67s, like Avengers was awful, it does not deserve a 67, Gotham Knights also doesn't deserve a 67. But it's so hilarious to even see Kill the Justice League, a game with a very hefty budget from what we understand, $100 million, if not even, uh, you know, higher that it's doing so terribly. Now, headed back to the article, though, it talks about sales. As reported on Twitter by GamesIndustry.Business head Christopher Dring, the Justice League is currently seeing sales in its first week that are roughly half of what Guardians of the Galaxy experienced during its release. And you have to keep in mind that the Guardians of the Galaxy game it had less discussion, right? Less people were talking about it because a lot of individuals were just so upset with things like Avengers that they didn't want to end up supporting it. But Suicide Squad has had quadruple the amount of t attention, but it's all been negative. And I know companies love to follow the all press is good press rule and they don't even care if it's negative, but clearly negative press does not work. And this is a shining example of that. Millions of people have been talking about this Suicide Squad game and apparently its sales are not even half of what Guardians of Galaxy experienced during its release. And of course, we do not have exact sales numbers. We do not have uh, solid evidence, but GamesIndustry.biz does get a lot of numbers and I do tend to believe them. Given that the Marvel game, which also featured third-person combat and wisecracking team of unlikely heroes, was seen as underperforming itself, that doesn't bode well for Suicide Squad. And of course, while, again, we do not have direct numbers, we can see the Steam player charts and how terribly those are looking for the game. On release day, the all-time peak was a measly 13,459 players on Steam, and playing as of 19 minutes ago, again, only a few days from release, it's sitting at only 6,166 players. These numbers are just not good. No matter which way you slice the cake, things are not looking fantastic for this game. And, um, Obviously, it's not just the negativity that was surrounding this game, right? That there were some people who didn't like the way that it looked. Uh, it's also, you know, Suicide Squad apart, the fact that they decided to set this in the Arkhamverse, and those other games are so fantastic. This game was almost always certainly going to pale in comparison, um, and this game certainly does pale in comparison to the other Arkham games. 
games, whether we are talking about the gameplay itself, the visuals, the story, or even seemingly the sales, gr even graphically, it's not better than a 10-year-old game, and that shocks me. And as far as superhero game releases go, sure, Spider-Man 2 wasn't the story I was looking for, and of course, many people were not big fans of it, but mechanically, it was a triple-A game. It was really smooth and ultimately enjoyable. Suicide Squad feels like they didn't even try to make something comparable to other Arkham titles. Like, what the fuck happened to Rocksteady? Of course, one of the major things is many of the developers left Rocksteady over the years and the team that replaced them are not comparable to the previous teams, and this group of people just didn't come together and make a good product. It is unforgettable, but for all of the wrong reasons. And of course, unlike the other four games, a major issue here is also Sweet Baby Ink. Sweet Baby Ink helped this with the script writing of this game. They helped with the dialogue. They helped with the story. They helped with the banter and characters. I mean, it's just proven, again, that Sweet Baby Ink kills all that they touch. That they are not a positive driving force behind these projects, but a negative one. And of course, when we look at the other Arkham games, you know, some of these games released over, easily over a decade ago. I mean, Arkham Knight at this point came out nine years ago. I cannot believe that, especially looking at screenshots, and I recently live-streamed through all the Arkhamverse games in preparation of Suicide Squad. Those games are so much better in every way, shape, or form. And of course, looking at the Arkhamverse, some of these games are years old. We do not have updated sales numbers, but looking at this Hacker Noon article, it talks about the copies sold that we at least know, and again, some of them are years and years ago that they were last updated, but at 3 and 4, Arkham Knight and Origins each had 7 plus million copies sold. Coming in at number 2 is Arkham Asylum with 9.5 plus million copies sold, and at number 1, in my opinion, the best in the series, Arkham City, 12.5 plus million copies sold. And even if these numbers haven't been updated in years, there is no way that Suicide Squad could ever reach these heights at this point in time. It couldn't even touch Arkham City, which we know sold over 12 million copies. These games have been on the market forever. They've gone on sale consistently. So with those factors combined, it's got to be significantly higher than what is even confirmed. And of course, a major issue with Suicide Suicide Squad, bad story aside, cringeworthy characters aside, mediocre gameplay aside, I think that people are very rightfully wary of the word live service. Lots of people won't touch games when they see that term, and yes, um, you know, terrible story, writing, that disrespects four incredible games and an incredible cast of characters with a history going back decades and decades and decades. The way they made this game as a live service always having to be online title, it's just a massive turnoff. There are games that I initially have been excited for and I see live service and I instantly do not want to play it and I know many other people are like that as well. Even though we're moving towards an all digital world, there's still a difference in people's minds between something that says you can only buy something digitally and a game that you have to be always online to play. It's great to have an online multiplayer mode, uh, but this isn't an MMO and to require a constant connection to the internet is ridiculous. So really everything that could have gone wrong for Suicide Squad has gone wrong and it will be interesting to see over the next few weeks and months uh, what the sales numbers actually ended up being. But right now we are hearing that they are off to a very shaky start, and this Suicide Squad game will not likely reach the heights of the previous Arkhamverse games that are, I mean, at this point, older. They're getting on in their age, um, and where this game should have easily been a game that people were extremely excited for because it's set in the Arkhamverse, a game that had a very big budget, of course a game that looked visually newer. They had a chance to stun people with, uh, you know, the capabilities in this game and with the technology that they have at their disposal at this point in time compared to the other Arkhamverse games. And this game in every way, shape, or form is just not as good as 
the previous titles in this series. It's such a disappointing situation, but ultimately, live service combined with microtransactions combined with Sweet Baby Inc. and this new rock study that is clearly a team of individuals who cannot work together and make a fantastic product like the previous rock study. It was just always a recipe for disaster. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.